Welcome, Welcome. to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. Easy, easy, easy. Hello there. This is Chris from Own or Disown. Today we're reviewing the Mech 16 GP and Mech 17 GP2 from Electronics. As a bonus, we also have our hands on the LPP G2 water cooling unit that's compatible with both. One of the things I like most about electronics is their focus on bringing as much as they can to the table for the money and willingness to innovate in the space. We'll see how much that innovation pays off further in the video. But for now, let's take a look at our review units. On your screen right now is our Mech 16 GP. This laptop is configured with an Intel Core i9-13900HX, an NVIDIA RTX 4080 with 12GB of VRAM, 32GB of DDR5-4800 in a 2x16 configuration, a 16-inch 240Hz uh, QHD display, 1TB Samsung PM9A1, which is similar to a 980 Pro. Uh, it's got Thunderbolt 4, it's got a Cherry MX keyboard, it's also got Advanced Optimus in a full-size SD card slot. With a 16-inch display, it's a good balance between screen real estate and portability. But wait, there's more! If you want the Mech 16 in a larger package with a larger screen, we also have its big brother, the Mech 17 GP2. This does have a larger screen, but isn't overall much larger than the 16 chassis. In terms of specs, the Mech 17 GP2 is also packed with an Intel Core i9-13900HX, an NVIDIA RTX 4080 with 12GB of VRAM, 32GB of DDR5-4800 in a 2x16 configuration, a 17-inch 240Hz QHD display, a 1TB Samsung PM9A1, a Thunderbolt 4, a Cherry MX keyboard, it also has Advanced Optimus, and also a full-size SD card slot. With a 17.3-inch display, this laptop is for those of you who want a bigger screen for immersive gaming or multitasking. We've since tossed the brush black skin from M2 Skins on it, and it blends right into the work environment. We'll be diving deeper into the Mech 17 GP2 in a little bit, but for now, let's just say if you're looking for a laptop that doesn't compromise on size or power, then the Mech 17 GP2 might just be your choice. On the left side, we have more connectivity options. There's a Kensington lock, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and a mic in and audio port out. At the back, we have an exhaust vent on each side for the cooling system, the power jack, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, a Thunderbolt 4 port, an HDMI 2.1 port, and the liquid cooling ports for the LPP unit. Moving on to the right side, there are two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and a full-size SD card slot. On the bottom, we have a plastic panel with generous fan ports along the rear side. Uh, towards the front are some dual speakers that are downward firing. Finally, let's take a look at the keyboard. Here you'll find a full-size mechanical keyboard with per-key RGB lighting and a number pad. Also, full-size arrow keys. Huzzah! The trackpad is smooth and responsive, and the interior is coated in a soft-touch matte finish. Let's hop over and take a look at the Mech 17 now. Uh, the chassis is built from the same materials and feels just as solid. On the left side, we've got uh, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, a mic in, and an audio port out. There's a power jack, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, a Thunderbolt 4 port, an HDMI 2.1 port, and the liquid cooling ports for the LPP unit. Moving over to the right side, there's the same two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and the same full-size SD card slot. Moving around to the bottom, we again have generous fan ports, um, and the, the rear panel is made of plastic. Inside you have the same full-size keyboard and number pad. Uh, on the 17-inch, they actually gave you a much larger trackpad, which is nice to see, and the same soft-touch matte interior finish. Let's start out by taking a look at the display color accuracy of both units. We're looking at some impressive color accuracy here. Uh, with the sRGB range of 97% on the 16-inch, you're getting almost full coverage for the most commonly used color space in the digital world. This means your games, web browsing, and streaming content are going to look vibrant and true to life. Uh, on the Adobe and P3 uh, side of things, you're looking at 73% and 76% respectively. Uh, these color spaces that are more relevant to prof professional uses. So if you're into photo editing, graphic design, video editing, these numbers aren't going to knock your socks off, but you will get fairly accurate representation of your work. 
The NTSC coverage is 69%. It's a little bit less relevant today as it's an older standard, but it's still good to know. Switching gears to the MX-17 GP2, uh, these numbers are roughly the same as the 16-inch panel. Uh, there's, you know, a variance of a percentage here or two, but we'll cover them anyway. sRGB is 98%. Uh, Adobe RGB is 73%, and P3 is 76%. Uh, and NTSC is slightly lower at 68%, but as I mentioned earlier, it's not really as relevant for modern applications. In summary, both displays are going to serve you well for gaming and general use. However, if you're a professional creative, you may want to consider your color accuracy needs carefully. So I want to start off by saying I absolutely love these keyboards. Working on these keyboards has been an absolute joy. Um, I'm very accurate with them. However, they, it does come with... <laughs> a little bit of a downside uh, depending upon how you look at it and that is noise so i wanted to share some audio samples with you guys around how the uh, the keyboard sounds when you're you know typing away at it and what level of noise it produces so have a listen on both units Alright, let's, so let's take a look at our LPPG2 unit. On the top is your fill port. Each side is actually well ventilated and contains a translucent panel uh, that shows your water level. And of course, it's also RGB lit. Uh, around the front is your power supply port, your pass-through power port, uh, and your mag valve connector. Uh, setting this unit up is actually impressively simple. You start by hooking up the power brick to the appropriate port, uh, and then you connect the uh, short pass-through power connector from... Uh, the other power port to the laptop. Uh, last, you uh, hook up the mag valve cooling tube. Uh, each side is magnetic and should pop into place with minimal leakage. Uh, I did occasionally notice some drops of water, but I was also constantly connecting and uh, disconnecting the tubes for testing, which I don't think is a normal use case for, for this unit. Uh, it's still an impressive setup for this type of design. Once connected, we can hop over to the control center software. Uh, under the performance option, there's an LPP menu item on the left. Uh, you find the LPP device in the drop-down, and then you click connect. If the connection is successful, then you'll see control options animate and show up, and you'll hear the pump spin up and start cycling water into the laptop. We're taking a look at some in-game uh, measurements of the, the LPP unit. Uh, this is the Witcher 3 uh, in the middle of Tucson. Uh, we picked this location due to its blend of CPU and GPU utilization. Uh, the CPU temp here seems to be similar, uh, which is just under the thermal throttle limit. I think that's set to 95 degrees on both of these. GPU temp is significantly lower. Uh, you can see about an 8 to 10 degree uh, dip between the two. Um, both CPU and GPU are sustaining higher frequencies on the LPP side, so uh, that thermal headroom is, is getting put to use. Alright, so what is the impact of using the LPP unit in gaming? Well, we've got a few charts uh, after we took some hardware info logs that we'd like you to take a look at. The first chart you see is clock speed. You can clearly see here that the 13900 is thankful for the extra cooling by boosting significantly higher across our gaming test by about 400 megahertz on average. The next chart you're going to see is going to show how temps were impacted. And they're not. It looks like the additional cooling freed up clock speed, but kept the CPU at its thermal throttle limit. I mean, the reality is Intel chips are toasty, and the desktop variants uh, need nearly exotic cooling to tame, so this isn't surprising from a 120 millimeter unit. All right, so let's take a look at GPU temps. You can start to see a big benefit from the LPP unit here. It lowers the GPU temp by about 8 degrees Celsius across the board. And you're no longer sitting at that thermal design limit. The story remains much the same when you look at the GPU hotspot temp. It lowers about 8 degrees from 93 to 85 on average. Uh, this is a great result by any measure in a laptop. The last chart we're going to look at for temperature is GPU memory temp. I saw the biggest advantage here, dropping temps from the thermal limit of about 98 to a more manageable 85. 
Uh, so that's great to see for your memory chips on, on the main board. All right, so let's talk fan noise. Depending upon your perspective, it can be a crucial part of any gaming laptop experience. Uh, after all, nobody wants a jet engine roaring next to them when they're trying to enjoy their favorite game or get some work done. We've tested the Mech 16 and Mech 17 in four different scenarios, uh, Office, Balanced, Beast, and Beast with LPP Connected. Uh, so let's take a look at how those scenarios played out and how the machines performed. On the Mech 17 side of the coin, in office mode it matches the 16 with a noise level of about 50 decibels. In balance mode it is a bit quieter than its smaller sibling, producing 59 decibels. Uh, beast mode is, sees a slight increase to 61 decibels, and with the LPP connected that noise level drops considerably back down to a comfortable 53 decibels. And here are some sound samples for you. Even with their high performance modes, the LPP does a great job of keeping noise levels in check while delivering that extra performance punch. Speaking of performance, uh, I'm actually going to shut up now and let you all soak in some charts from our testing. Enjoy!
Okay, there, there's a lot to soak in there, uh, and there are a few charts that may have looked a little odd to you. Um, we included some extra results in there we had to kind of rush around to do at last minute because uh, Electronics had pushed out a firmware update. Uh, and after our initial testing of the firmware update, we noticed that there were some, some tests that were significantly impacted, so we actually paused putting the review together to go back and, and retest the, a couple of the beast profiles on each unit uh, that got the firmware update. So that's why you see you know nearly 10 lines for each unit because we test every um, because we test every scenario and profile and then we had to you know connect the LPP unit and, and then we got the firmware update. So there's a lot to soak in there um, and some of it you know it, it helped performance, some of it not so much. Long story short, both units are absolute powerhouses. Uh, the Mech 17 GP2 is, you know, is just an absolute beast. It, it, it's faster than the GP16, uh, most likely due to the additional cooling space uh, and chassis space to be able to cool those components. Both keyboards are absolutely fantastic and a joy to use. Uh, the build quality is solid. This displays offer good sRGB color accuracy. Uh, office mode itself, while quiet, does cut performance quite a bit, so I would not recommend it for gaming unless you absolutely have to. Um, battery life is also a bit of a weak point. Uh, both of our units lasted just over two hours in a video playback. Given that they have a 99 watt hour battery, that's a little disappointing. Also, don't, don't game on battery. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's not a good time. The control center software itself is actually very user friendly, uh, makes it very easy to configure the laptop the way you want. The LPP unit itself doesn't always result in faster performance, but it does significantly improve thermals. And you can see from the temperatures that they're actually, you know, they're much lower and they're not at the thermal design limit. So in conclusion, you know, if you're looking for a high performance laptop that, you know, doesn't screen gamer uh, and has a great balance of build quality, power, uh, I think both the 16 and 17 are well worth your your consideration, and their and their pricing tends to be a little bit more competitive than you know some of the the other name brand laptops out there for the same specs. So uh, Stephen and I are going to be doing uh, some content later on uh, comparing the uh, Mech 17 to uh, I believe another unit that uses the same chassis. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll have some additional results and. Uh, testing done for that that video and we look forward to uh, sharing it with you guys. Cheers!